Hey everyone, for this video I want to try out a new format that's a bit easier for me to record and put together, and I want to cover topics that might be a bit simpler to cover but are still quite important nonetheless. And in this video, I'm going to be covering the concepts of component space and local space when working with skeletal meshes and animations inside of Unreal Engine. Now, these terms are interchangeable with others in a lot of circumstances. The concepts that they define are given other names in other areas. When working with additives, component space is called mesh space. Within a control rig, component space is called world space. And in a lot of cases, local space is referred to as bone space as well. And, well, what all these names share in common is that they end in the word space. And that is because there are different ways of defining 3D space and working with skeletal meshes in their bones within 3D space. So let's go over 3D space to make sure we have a solid understanding of it so that we can then understand the different spaces that the different terms are used for. I'll do that using Blender. All right, I have a new Blender project and it is tradition to delete the default cube before adding a new cube to work with. All right. I'm using Blender for this demonstration because it has a very visible grid here. So it makes things a bit easier to explain with a visual aid. When an object is given a position in 3D space, it is given values that define that position. This object has a value to define its position in each singular dimension of three-dimensional space separately. And each dimension is given a letter as a name and when working with 3D space, this is almost always X, Y, and Z. So I can move it along the X dimension, Y dimension, and Z dimension separately, and when combined together, I can move it anywhere I want to in three-dimensional space. Now we can see a representation of the X dimension and Y dimension in these two lines here. The red line represents the X dimension. The green line represents the Y dimension. When added together, we get the ability to move the cube in two dimensions, and it is not showing a vertical blue line that defines a Z dimension, but we can imagine it there. And now I'm going to create a second cube. And I can move this second cube and this first cube, and they're occupying the same space. Now that makes complete intuitive sense to me and to you as well, but it isn't as intuitive to a computer. The computer requires a shared reference point so that it can know that an x value of 5 for cube number 2 is the exact same thing as an x value of 5 for cube number 1. And it does know that. These cubes both have an x value of 5 and they're sharing the exact same space. So, how does it do this? Well, there's a defined shared reference point called an origin point for the space, and that point is where the x, y, and z values are 0, 0, 0. This origin point also defines the rotation values as well as being 0, 0, 0. And rotation in 3D space will sometimes be given three axes named after the axis of rotation. So that corresponds with the location. And well, that means that if I rotate this cube along the X axis of its rotation, it's also rotating along the X axis of its location. That's always going to be the case, but sometimes these are given the names of pitch, yaw, and roll instead of X, Y, and Z. Blender, it's X, Y, and Z. In Unreal, it is pitch, yaw, and roll. And I can't recall off the top of my head which value in Unreal, X, Y, or Z that pitch, yaw, and roll correspond with. And so when working with the different spaces in Unreal Engine, the thing that differentiates them is the manner in which the shared reference point or origin point, the terms are the same thing, shared reference point is something I came up with, it's not generally used, but it makes logical sense in this context of explaining what an origin point is, but an origin point is the term that you will encounter throughout 3D software. So right now, we are working in component space, or root space, mesh space, the names mean the same thing. Here I can see the three axes of the root, the X, Y, and Z axes, and here I can see the rotational axes as well. We can rotate the root along its own Z axis, along its X axis, its Y axis, 
and any other bone I click on, let's grab the lower arm bone. Well, it's going to rotate relative to the root and move relative to the root because the shared reference point for all of these bones, the origin point for the component space is the root bone. And let's say we want to pose this character and we want to rotate the arm up at about a 45 degree angle along the axis of the elbow. Because that's the only way the lower arm can rotate up. Well, we'd have to go back and forth along all the different axes to try and get a pose that works. And that's a lot of extra work compared to well, what we'd want to do and just rotate it relative to the upper arm. And that is where the concept of bone space comes into play. I'll switch over to that now. And now we rotate the lower arm along its Z axis. And that's the axis we desire. It's relative to the upper arm bone. And well, how is that accomplished? Well, let's start at the root. That looks the same. It has the same X axis, Z axis, Y axis. It's all matches component space. That's because in a roundabout way, the root does define local space, but the origin point for each bone takes its offset from the previous bone into account. So there's not much of a difference between the root and the pelvis as far as rotation and location goes or the other spine bones, but all of these offsets from each bone accumulate. And by the time we work our way really to this upper arm bone, there's a pretty big difference between the upper arm's axis of rotation for the Z axis and the roots. And that's because we accumulate the offsets and the origin point for each bone's localized coordinate space is the ending point of the previous bone in the chain. And that allows us to preserve the localized relative offsets between bones in a really neat way. And why is this important? I'm just rotating bones in a skeleton arbitrarily in a way that doesn't affect anything outside the context of this viewport here. And that's because well, I can just pose this character pointlessly for this video while I talk. The engine poses the character all the time inside of animation graphs. And it needs to work in these two spaces just like we do. All these nodes, all the logic, all the code, all the math that underlies the nodes we place works in either local space or component space. And so depending on which space a node requires and which space it works in, the values that it works with might have different results. Like an x-axis rotation of 90 means something completely different in component space than local space. In local space, that's going to change for each individual bone and be very dependent on the structure and the axes given to the bones in any individual skeletal mesh. The default space for an animation graph in Unreal Engine is local space. Some nodes do work in component space. So a local space node has a white pin to connect it to other nodes and a white connection between it and another node in local space. Component space has blue pins and you need a node to convert spaces so that the engine has the context of the correct space to use for the nodes that require it. And this is done so that component space nodes like this foot placement node, which handles foot locking and slope warping in this animation graph that I have here, well, it doesn't need to worry about the math to convert from local space to component space. We just do that here separately. And that makes its own internal logic a lot simpler. This node here and this node here, they do have a small cost and it adds up in a large system. So you do want to try to reduce the amount of times you convert between local and component space and try to group your nodes of like spaces together. Another situation where you'll encounter both local space and component space is with additive animations. Here I have an aim offset for looking around. I can hold control and move my mouse in the blend graph and this is a asset type that inherits from blend spaces and I do cover the basics of working with blend spaces in another video on the channel. Definitely check it out. It should appear somewhere up on the screen as a link to click to. If you're not familiar with blend spaces at all is I'm not going to go over the concept underlying blend spaces in this video but I can move within the blend graph and see the different poses of the aim offset. And well, this just looks like a normal blend space right now, but I'm using this aim offset in this locomotion system I have here, the same one I've been building in the tutorial series on recently on the channel. And if I play, I can look up, we can kind of see the head moving, I can look down, and I can look, you know, before I turn in place. 
So that aim offset is being applied, but it is also being applied while I run around. It is being applied while I walk around. I'm in the walk cycle right now, but it is still applied as I'm playing the stop animation. So I'm stopping, I'm looking, I'm still looking while I'm idling. Now we aren't using blend spaces everywhere and having alternative versions of every animation with the character looking in a different direction. We're using an additive to apply that looking around offset to the locomotion pose of the character. And that's accomplished because an additive animation is at its core the difference in the rotational values of each bone from a defined base pose. I'll search up one of these animations in the content browser and open it. So this is what the animation looks like. It's what it looked like in the animation software. In Unreal Engine, we're going to tell it it's a mesh space additive, which is the same thing as working in component space, and that it is relative to this right here, this pose. So now, that last animation we were looking at, let's see, this one right here, well, the engine, because it's an additive, isn't tracking the location of the foot and the leg, everything in like an absolute scale, no. It is tracking the rotational difference between the head, the neck, the spine, any bones that moved in this pose, and the base pose. And it can apply that difference in degrees to any pose when we use an aim offset node. I'll just search it up here in the graph. We drive the blend graph of the blend space and the aim offset to apply a new base pose. It applies the additive and gives us a new output pose. And well, the aim offset is supposed to use animations that are all in mesh space within its graph. And that's because the aim offset node, I'll go ahead and grab another one there, maybe I shouldn't have deleted that so quickly, uses mesh space. So you'll encounter issues if you take any of these animations, set it to be local space, and then place it in an aim offset and place an aim offset node in your graph. And that's an example of um, the different spaces and how they affect you in a more practical manner. Additionally, I can grab this looking forward up animation. It's a mesh space additive. I can put it in the graph and I'll just get an apply additive node. I'm typing around my microphone, so that's why I'm typing slowly and making so many typos here. So here we have two options, apply additive and apply mesh space additive. Normal additive, that's local space, that's bone space. Mesh space, that is relative to the root, that is component space. I'm going to choose the wrong node. I'm going to apply a local space, a bone space additive, but I'm going to plug in a mesh space additive. Remember, this is looking forward and up. This is this animation right here. Now, I'm going to compile, and look at that. The pose is completely wrong because it is taking offsets that are defined in mesh space and applying them in local space. And so that's creating an offset here that just isn't right. So when you're having issues with additives and poses just look wrong, make sure you check that you're applying the right kind of additive. And if you're making a dynamic additive at runtime, you wanna make sure that you're checking it as mesh space or not, depending on how you're applying it. And now, additives are a big subject to get into. I don't want to cover them in that much detail in this video because they deserve one or multiple videos of their own. So, I'm not going to talk more about them here because that would just make this video way too long. But we also have control rigs. I'll just type in control. I guess I'll also type rig. And place this node here. And let's see if we have a good asset that we can work as an example in this project. This one might be interesting. I haven't looked at it yet, but I'm going to open it up. Ah, it is not here. That's odd. Uh, let's try this one. Okay, yes, let's go with this control rig. It's just one that came with a third person template. It's nothing custom, and it is used for animating the skeleton in Unreal Engine to create animations in Engine instead of an external software like Maya. And now it is taking it a few moments to open. And this one is not meant to be placed in an animation graph at runtime. There are some others that could be placed in an animation graph uh, that could do some things like IK foot placement. But while well, this is a complicated graph, we're not really too focused on uh, it. What we want to look for is maybe some examples 
of converting between spaces. Here we go. We're getting the transform of a bone. And well, it's doing all sorts of other things to set up um, the neck. And I'm guessing that's spine and that's a typo that got left over. But it's defining the space that it's retrieving the value in. We have local space and global space. And I misspoke earlier when I said that the control rig calls component space world space. It actually calls it global space, it looks like. So that was a bit confusing for me starting out. But local space is bone space or local space. The terms are the same. Global space in a control rig is component space, which is mesh space. So a lot of confusion around these concepts come from so many interchangeable terms being used inside the engine in various places. But of course, if we get this in local space, well, that's going to change all the behavior of this and all the math built on top of it. It might create some weird results. So again, understanding these concepts doesn't actively affect or change how any of this is going to work, but it can help you to set things up properly and to find well, errors when things aren't working properly because mismatching spaces and performing operations that are meant to be performed relative to the root or you know moving 10 units on the x-axis well that's going to be a completely different thing for every bone depending on their own orientation in local space but if you want to do it kind of just always know hey i'm just moving to the left here then well or maybe yeah x is actually right at least for the uh, mannequin skeleton then you just want to use component space if you just want to move something to the right with ik you'd want to make that translation and component space otherwise you know moving the hand along the x-axis might mean pulling it forward and so i'm hopefully this video has given you a bit better of a practical understanding of local space component space and what they mean that you can apply to whatever you're doing with skeletal meshes and animations in unreal engine and if you've made it this far into the video i want to thank you for watching and i also need to give my patrons over on patreon a shout out and to thank them as well. You can access most of the videos I put up on the channel early on my Patreon as well for $5 a month. So if you would like to support me, I would encourage you to go over to my Patreon and support me there. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.